So I was browsing the internet today when I saw the announcement that another local comic book store in my area was shutting down. While it's always unfortunate to see a person lose all their hard work, this didn't come as a surprise to me when I saw that it was due to a lack of business. Now, I imagine there's a lot of you out there whose local stores have shut down who are wondering, why is this happening when superheroes have felt almost inescapable for the past two decades? Well, there's a lot of moving parts to this story, so I'm going to try to break it down as simply as I can. Part 1. American comic books aren't actually as old as you would think. The first one published can be traced back to 1934, but I'll let the late Jack Kirby explain their evolution. I, from what I understand, the editorial comic was first, and then they added a few panels to that and you had a comic strip. And they added a few pages to that and you had a comic book. And what we can add to the comic book? Uh, we may have to think about that. So, I believe that's the interesting part of the entire field, is to say, what is it? Where is it going? How will it evolve? And we experiment with that every day. Previously, comics were defined by story trends that changed every five or so years, with the first trend being superheroes. Then western, horror, and romance comics followed suit. Good creators were constantly exploring new ideas and finding workarounds to the people trying to censor them. However, trends come and go, and nothing stays gone forever. Which leads us to... Part 2. In the 1960s, Stan Lee would lead comics to unparalleled heights with his revolutionary business sense. He realized that he needed to appeal to both niche markets for potential growth as well as bigger ones. The whole reason that Spider-Man... Marvel's most profitable character exists is because Stan thought that there weren't any superheroes that appealed directly to teenagers. He was also one of the first to capitalize on the marketability of these characters by pushing merchandise and crossing them over into other mediums such as cartoons and TV dramas. He was the person that would lead superheroes to stay in the dominant market force for decades to come. Unfortunately, Stan's successors wouldn't have the same level of business sense, which leads us to... Part 3. In 1972, Phil Soling would engineer the direct market model, where comic books would be sold into specialty comic book stores directly through the publishers, bypassing other avenues such as newsstands, grocery stores, and gas stations. This would prove to be both beneficial to the publishers and comic book stores at first. With a direct market model, publishers could make their books non-returnable so they wouldn't have to deal with the refund fees for unsold products. Meanwhile, the comic book stores could sell unsold books at a heavy discount to appeal to unsure buyers, and offer a greater variety of books than newsstands could. This practice was successful enough that over the next decade, publishers would phase out selling to other venues altogether. Now, you probably already figured out why this is a bad long-term decision, because when you take away all other avenues for growth, the market will eventually stagnate. In spite of this, comic books still could have continued to grow their fan base as long as their stories remained accessible to new readers. But Part 4. I imagine that many of you who collect comics probably have friends or family who'd say, I'd like to get into comics, but I don't know where to start. Well, do you remember how I said that Stan Lee made superhero comics a dominant market for decades? Yeah, that eventually caught up to them. I mentioned in a prior video on how to fix the Amazing Spider-Man comics that the fact that superheroes have remained the dominant genre for over five decades was unprecedented. Comparatively, music, TV, films, novels, video games, everything has trends that change with time. However, this just stopped being the case for comics. Sure, other genres were available to read, but none of them ever reached the same commercial heights as superheroes did. And, with no way to bring in new readers, the market became oversaturated with superheroes. The publishers began to focus more on continuity and company crossovers to influence readers to buy books over time. They eventually took this to the extreme by requiring readers to buy three or more books just to follow the one character they cared about. Readers who didn't know where to begin didn't bother because it felt like homework to get started, and even some invested readers got sick of being gouged and quit the hobby. Thus, publishers are left with only an aging, established market. Last year, writer Jerry Conway made a reflective statement on Twitter about how unusual this lack of market change is. He hypothesized that Stan Lee most likely anticipated this borrowed time, hence why he pushed so hard for Marvel to become a multimedia company, so that they could continue to have other revenue outlets and the superhero bubble eventually burst. Part 5 I don't want to preach doom and gloom without offering a solution, and I think this is actually an easy fix. 
The American comics industry has had serious health issues for a long time now, and the old method isn't working anymore. What we need is to completely upend the current market. And here's how I would do that. 1. Make comics more widely available. By making new comics available at general retailers like drugstores and Walmart again, you create an easy access for kids who might not live nearby a comic book store with a way to get started. A big reason I never got to collect many comics growing up is because I didn't live close to a comic book store. The success of the more widely available manga shows that people are interested in comics if they're actually available for them to buy where they normally shop. Convenience is key. This will help comic shops in turn because if people are buying comic books again, then they'll be more inclined to check out comic book stores to see what they can't find at, you know, bigger stores like Target. 2. Lower the price. 4 to $5 for a 20-page magazine full of ads isn't enticing to people when you can buy a Steam game for that price on a good sale. To make the comparison to manga again, you can buy a full volume of manga for $10 to $13 on average with no ads in them. Or you could buy a burger for that price. And, you know, I could at least eat a burger. This also applies to digital comics. There's no reason that a single issue of a digital comic should cost as much as a printed one when there's no loss for printing paper and ink. 3. Offer more genres. More variety is always a good thing, and to add on to point 2, people are more willing to go out on a limb and buy something if it's cheap. 4. Stop doing constant event crossovers. The MCU managed to figure out that you don't put out a big crossover every year. It disrupts other ongoing stories. Space them out, and let people become interested in other characters through small team-up stories before forcing them to read about characters they might not care about. 5. This one will be controversial, but discard the decades-long continuity. Long continuity in and of itself isn't necessarily going to kill a book. One Piece is proof of that. However, meaningless continuity will. My brother said that the average superhero wiki reads more like an ongoing joke than a single narrative, and he's right. When death has no consequences and characters can casually acknowledge how their close friends and allies have risen from the dead in less than a year, all tension is lost. Also, there's no point in having an ongoing continuity when the status quo resets constantly. Since superheroes are perpetually stuck in the middle of their stories, they can't grow over risk of permanently changing the character and they can't go back to the status quo without becoming stagnant. So I say, screw continuity. Reboot the books every five or so years to allow new kids to jump on and old readers have outgrown the characters to find something new. If publishers don't like that idea, which I don't think they do, then they have to allow the characters to change permanently, because you can't have it both ways. They've been trying this for decades and people are sick of it. In conclusion, I hope this has provided some discussion for those of you who are trying to figure this situation out. I love comics as an art form, and I want to see them be successful, but unless the publishers are willing to change with the times, then we might see the end of mainstream comics as we know them. Or, you know, maybe I'm just a big dummy. Mmm.